Coming up from the first Masters of the FIBA 3X3 World Tour 2019 season in Doha, the diamond in the desert. We sit down with Team Doha players Nadim Muslic and Sidhu Ndoy, who share a special friendship after helping Qatar win U18 titles at the World Cup and Asia Cup back in 2016. Carl De Hesse opens up about returning to the World Tour after a four-year absence and how Hoop's crazy Philippines can match up with Europe's best in 3x3. And we talk to high flyer Carlos Las Manas about his love for 3x3 and whether he's focusing on being the best player in the world. Plus, stay tuned to the end of the magazine for a can't-miss top five plays of the tournament. It's quick. It's epic. It's Olympic. Welcome to the world of FIBA 3x3 basketball, a game played with non-stop music on a half court between two teams of three players aiming to hit that game-winning 21-point mark in 10 minutes of time. Previously at the FIBA 3x3 World Tour, Novi Sad completed an unbeaten season at the Bloomage Beijing final after defeating Riga Ghetto in the final. So that meant the Serbians finished 2018 with a perfect 32-0 record on the world tour in a season for the ages. Dusan Bullet, aka Mr. Bulletproof, won the MVP in Beijing to finish the year as 3x3's king and number one world ranking. But it's time for new beginnings in the FIBA 3x3 World Tour 2019 season means just that. Can Novi Sad continue their unbeaten streak? Or can Riga Ghetto get revenge like the Stark sisters? Maybe number one Lehman can take 3x3's Iron Throne. Let's find out. I'm still catching my breath after an incredible day one of the season where the Filipino teams, Pasig Chooks and Balaga Chooks, they stole the show. After comfortably beating locals Katara in the Tiso fastest game of day one, number 18's Pasig Chooks were major underdogs against world number one Lehman, even though the Serbs were without injured star Stefan Stojic, AKA Mr. Robot. In a game with more twist than inception, Pasig Chooks and Lehman were battling like it was WrestleMania. It came down to the wire, and Taylor Statham had ice in his veins with tough makes on the inside to trigger the biggest Filipino party since Pac-Man Manny Pacquiao was flexing. <laughs> Not to be outdone by their rivals, Balaga Chooks also made the crowd hype. Against red-hot world number three Riga Ghetto, Travis Franklin was in beast mode and getting it done on both ends. In an early hole, Riga attempted a comeback and they got the superheroes in action. Carlos Las Manas, aka Batman, and his sidekick Robin, Norris Miezes, were doing their thing. But this would not be Tiger at Augusta. Franklin denied Riga's comeback and sealed an incredible opening win for Balaga Chooks. They was just getting warmed up and they served it up against Moscow Inanimo. Franklin continued to play bully ball, but Moscow silenced the pro-Filipino crowd with tough buckets. The teams answered each other like it was a Jeopardy contest. This could only be resolved in overtime. Your best below inched Moscow Inanomo closer with a sweet reverse layup, but that just gave Alvin Pasaola an opportunity to call game, and he did not disappoint to cap off an incredible day one for the Filipino teams. Now with all the attention on the Filipinos, it was easy to forget about Novi Side. You remember, right? The team that never lost a game on the World Tour last season? And the streak showed no signs of ending with Novi Side cruising past locals Doha in quick fashion with Mr. Bulletproof going bang, bang, and another bang to end the contest. Novi Sad continued to roll against Tokyo Dime, but the only player throwing dimes was Mr. Bulletproof, and he broke social media for the first time this season after this filthy no-look pass. 
Despite suffering shocking losses, Lehman and Riga Ghetto still made it through to the quarterfinals along with unbeaten Piran. Tokyo Dime and Ljubljana made it through after splitting their games. Number 6 seeds Moscow Inonomo were the highest seeds eliminated while Mount Royal from Canada and local teams Katara and Doha bid farewell. The Doha Masters helped put 3X3 back on the map in Qatar, but the Gulf country has a proud history in the sport, with Qatar winning the U18 World Cup and the U18 Asia Cup in 2016. Team Doha players Nadim Muslic and Sidhu Ndoy were part of those successful teams. It's my best memory in 3 on 3 basketball. We won the World Cup. We lost first game, then we came together. Then one by one, we win. One game, one game, step by step. Came back stronger and won it. Like We trust each other, and it was very hard competition. The teams were really good. Later that year, we won a 3x3 Asian Cup in Malaysia. Everyone was happy here that we bring the two gold medals that year. It was amazing feeling that year. That year is something special. Now on the big stage, Muslic and Ndoy are hoping their special bond can fuel Team Doha to success in the future. For sure it's gonna be harder, because it's the highest level of 3x3, but we are together a long time, so I believe we're gonna perform well. That's the main thing, I think, to be together. I'm happy to play with Nadim. Really, I'm so happy to play with Nadim. Best teammate, seriously. He's played good. He's talking with me in the court, outside in the court. He's my big brother, I can say that. Muslic and Ndoy know they'll have to sharpen every aspect of their games on a demanding world tour for years to come. In world tour, it's much more physical, you know. You have to focus on good defense, on rebounding, and also on shooting. So I keep the same role all the time, to fight as much as I can for rebounds, for defense, for steals. Just practice, then I think like everything will be all right. There is no room for a lot of mistakes, you know. You have to be focused all the time and play really aggressive and physically with these guys because they are professionals. Everywhere we're going, we want to win. Qatar be the first. We don't go there for joking or for fun or for just go. We just want to go for win. All right, here's a look at the quarterfinal bracket, highlighted by two teams from Serbia, the Philippines and Slovenia. First up, can Pasi continue their fairy tale masters and be the second Filipino team to defeat Riga Ghetto in Doha? Carlos Lazmanis gave Riga Ghetto the early edge and proved the bank is still open on Friday in Doha. Willed by their army of fans in the crowd, Pasi was going toe to toe and Joshua Munzon wanted to become a national hero. He couldn't be stopped going to the cup as the scores seesaw. With more action than the Fast and Furious film, it came down to the final minutes and it was Lasmanis who put his cape on. A clutch two-piece was like a pin to a balloon for the Filipino fans. But Sieg would not surrender and got within two from a Muzon splash, but Riga's big game reps were enough to give them another win and send them to the semifinals. The brave pursue won plenty of fans after a mighty Masters. They just uh, became tired and we just have a little bit more power and I think luck was on our side, that's why we win. The experienced Piran were looking to make light work of number eight seeds Tokyo Dime. Simon Finsgar, AKA the Sphinx, was proven he's ageless like Air Force Ones. Finsgar was dishing filthy touch passes to clown the hapless Tokyo Dime defenders. The Sphinx Hex on Tokyo finally wavered a bit as the Japanese team attempted a comeback in the game. But the game was never really in doubt. More pretty Piran passing got him close, and Finsgar finished with an exclamation point, showing off hops that would make Zion double tap. Piran win comfortably 21-15. We started really good, but then, yeah, we had a little uh, fall down. Uh, the intensity in the defense was not that good, but uh, at the end, we managed to get the win. 
The old rivals were back at it in the knockout stage. Novi Sad and Ljubljana. The Slovenians looked inside for buckets, as you would expect, then it helps when you stand over seven feet tall. Blaz Schreiner, a.k.a. Birdman, dunked like it was his personal playground to get Ljubljana off to a strong start. But they had a riddle to solve, an almost impossible Rubik's Cube. He goes by Dushan Bullet, a.k.a. Mr. Bulletproof, and he did as he pleased. He sauced to the rim, then he showed off his pretty passing. Ljubljana answered with a two-piece throw from Birdman to tie the score up with three minutes to play. They then edged ahead as Novi Sad's 34-game win streak suddenly looked in trouble. But the champs, they don't panic. Mr. Bulletproof splashed from deep and then sealed it with a layup to ensure the champs claim win number 35 straight. They were the team that put their tempo, and we must follow. In the end, it was really tough, but we win the game. Filipino sensation Balanga Chooks were now the only hope for the Philippines. But they faced a tough task against world number one Lehman. Travis Franklin continued to be nastier than toothpaste and orange juice as Balaga started well. But Lehman stepped it up on D, and baskets were suddenly hard to find for Balanga. They also put on a swimwear and went splash. Stefan Koic hit him with a nasty step back, followed by Maxim Kovacevic's two piece. There was just no gas left in the tank for Balanga. But that didn't stop their proud fans to continue cheering from the stands. Lehman, though, they move on to another semifinal with an easy 17-8 win. We wanted to get into this day two with a lot of aggressiveness and physical play just to play our game. The Shootout Contest the moment we crowned the best sniper in the tournament. The final sees four players hit 15 shots worth one point from three destinations around the arc, and three money balls worth two points from the 3x3 logo. And to spice things up, 5,000 USD are on the table for whoever beats the all-time record of 15 points, and 10 grand for whoever goes blackjack and scores all 21. Now, the conditions might have been humid, but the shots weren't wet. Carlos Las Manas had the early run-in with four points, and that total appeared to be good enough. But Lehman star Stefan Koyich stepped in and mastered the blowing win. The lanky serb nailed a couple of money balls and scored eight points. Stefan Koyich is your shootout winner of the Doha Masters Contest. Carl Dehesa has fond memories of the FIBA 3x3 World Tour after helping Manila North qualify for the final against Mighty Novi side in front of their passionate fans at the Manila Masters. But that was four years ago. After a lengthy time away, Dehesa is back on the World Tour with Balanga Chooks and has noticed the increase in standard over the years. It was my first introduction to the game. I wasn't sure what to expect going into it, but then when we were there, it was. It was uh, quite surprising how physical it was, how competitive it was, and how good the teams were. I liked it, it was, I enjoyed it, and I think I fell in love then. I was playing in the local league in the PBA for three years since then, and I was tied up with them, so I couldn't really commit to doing 3x3. Although I was always following it, you know, I was like, dang, that would be nice to be on the world tour, to be traveling, and I'm excited to finally be back here after three years, and I feel like a lot's changed, it's gotten bigger and there's a lot of new teams. I feel like it's gotten a lot more competitive as well. The newly formed Chooks to Go 3x3 League in the Philippines has created excitement in a country that lives and breathes hoops. We just finished our own local league and the support's been there, the fans are responding to it and um, the intensity's there. I think the Filipino players are still learning the game so the competitive level isn't really there yet with the, in terms of the physicality and the teamwork. Loving to play with flair, the Hesse believes Filipino 3x3 ballers can become more rounded players if they take certain traits from their European counterparts. As Filipinos, our approach to the game is way different from Europeans. We're very creative on the court when we're quick. So I think adding a one-on-one -on -one style of play with the European style, which I enjoy watching a lot, the passing, the deceptive screens, the cuts, the slips, 
the pin downs, the flares, everything. Just I think that it, we can be some major players in this sport. And um, I think with us competing in these tournaments more, it's just going to up our level of IQ in this sport as well. The Hess's 3x3 career has been relatively brief, but he's already experienced an unforgettable highlight at the 3x3 World Cup 2016, where the Philippines finished ninth. My best experience with the 3x3 so far has probably been the, the 2016 World Cup, being able to play with the Philippines colors on my back, to be around other countries and experiencing that international play. There's a lot of pride involved, and it gives our people another avenue, I guess. We're blessed to do what we do, and so the best thing we can do is to represent our country well. Oh, it's time for Rims to Rock for the first dunk contest of the season, featuring one of the best ever to do it, Vadim Miller Putupchenko, who was the hot favorite after winning the title in the Bloomage Beijing final last year. He was up against diminutive high flyer Air David Carlos from the Philippines and Great Britain's Joel Henry, who has more hops than an Easter bunny. This was lit from the beginning. Carlos dunked over four spectators with the power one-handed yam, but Miller responded with a sick between the legs off the bounce throwdown that he finished off by looking away in tribute to D. Brown's immortal slam. Henry was eliminated in the semis, but he did manage a sweet two-handed reverse flush over Miller. The epic final between Miller and Air David made Zach Levine, Aaron Gordon, seemed like grade B. When the stakes are raised, it is Miller time. He received a perfect score after a ridiculous between the leg slam over a spectator. But Air David hit back with the scorpion dunk and then a two for one slam involving a ladder that was more creative than a Kanye lyric. Despite Air David's heroics, Miller could not be stopped as he made Duncan look easier than brushing your teeth. He wrapped up the title with a smooth wrap around off the bounce to cap off a dunk contest for the ages. So it's Vadim Miller put up Chinko winning the title and taking home the $2,500 check. The top four seeds make it through to the semifinals, but the top two, Lehman and Novi side, square off against each other. In the first semi, Carlos Lasmanis came to play and had the bounce to get Riga Ghetto rolling early. Veterans Piran, though, they weren't flustered, and Adin Kad gets banged around inside to spark his team. Simon Fitzgar rose for the rejection, but in money time, Las Minas had the cash. He banked it like a teller and then finished it off in style. Las Minas had a game-high 10 points to lead Riga Ghetto to a 21-14 win and another finals berth. We won so badly this title. We never win the World Tour, and uh, we badly won this. Everybody was hyped over the second semifinal. Lehman against Novi Sad, the top two teams in the world. A Serbian showdown in the desert. Without their ace, Stefan Stojicic, Lehman were the underdogs, but they hit Novi Sad with an early jab. Maxim Kovacevic showed that Dusan Bullet wasn't foolproof, and Mihailo Vasic roared like he was a gladiator after an air one. But you knew the champs, they were gonna hit back and Mr. Bulletproof attacked the rack to keep Novi Sad within touch. Dejan Majsortovic followed suit, but Novi Sad went uncharacteristically cold down the stretch. A layup from Alexander Ratko with 18 seconds left would seal Lehman's sweet 20-17 victory. Novi Sad's 35-game win streak over with. Last year, we lost three times against them in one-point possession. So. This year we are more experienced and we play with our head cold and we got a very good, a very important win. World number three, Riga Ghetto, made a statement in 2018 with three second place finishes, including the Bloomage final against powerhouse Novi Sad. It's a defeat though, 
that still stinks. Actually, it was a good season for us, you know, because it's only second year. But uh, always we was that close to win World Tour, so we still have that bad uh, taste in our mouths. They beat us like that second time, European Championship, and then in a World Tour Super Finals. So, how do you think? How can I feel? You know, we said always uh, beat everyone. You know, that's why they are there. But uh, we don't practice only against them. We practice against everyone. After agonizingly falling short, the Latvians train hard in the offseason in a determined effort to keep improving. This game is getting more serious, so we have to work way more in the weight room. Now we have a really good coach who helped us with the scouting and everything, so we work like a professional team. We practice a lot in the summer, in the offseason. We practice together with another Latvian team, so I will try to do everything with 100% of my heart. Known as a dunking machine, Lasmanis is far more than a player that can just walk on air. He can score from anywhere and has all the tools to challenge Dushan Bullet as 3x3's best player. Always the team man, though. Flight KLM isn't focusing on individual greatness. I'm not caring about who will get uh, MVP or me as is me, Chavars, Ekrumic or Strelnik, our new guy, but uh, I just want to win every game, and that's how I play. An accomplished player, Las Manas has dedicated himself to 3x3 and found his true calling. It wasn't hard for me to choose 3x3 because um, I feel way better here, not like on 5-on-5 five five basketball. That's why I broke the contract with my team. I want to say thank you for uh, the whole season, what they give, give me, but sorry guys, I, I feel way better here. With the Tokyo Olympics inching closer, Las Manas is dreaming of being part of sports' biggest show. I have a wallpaper here, Tokyo. You see Tokyo, Olympic Games, so every time I use it, I, and I use it a lot, so I know that I want to go there. The season's first final had many subplots. Lehman were looking for revenge after losing to Riga Ghetto in the quarterfinals at the Bloomage Final in Beijing, while Riga Ghetto were aiming for their first ever Masters title after three runners-up finishes in 2018. Carlos Lasmanis loomed as the difference, and Flight KLM had an early takeoff. Not as spectacular, but just as effective, was Stefan Koyic who answered back with the layup. Points were hard to come by, testament to the pressure both teams were under but Las Manas was keeping cool and keeping Riga Ghetto ahead. Cold from deep, Lehman had to go inside, and Mihailo Vasic proved reliable to keep the Serbians in the game. Alexander Ratkov cut it to one inside two minutes to set up a nerve-jangling finale. After a finger roll from Koyets tied the score with 38 seconds remaining, fittingly, Las Manas cast it off the glass to give Riga Ghetto a 15-14 lead. Lehman had two chances to take it out, but they couldn't get it done. A euphoric Riga finally break through their master's drought. Riga, they finally, finally get it done at a master's on the world tour. It has been long awaited, and you can see the emotion as they finally get over the hump. Las Manas named MVP after an equal game high eight points and finish with 39 points overall. I feel amazing. I feel like I deserve this. This is the first World Tour in the Sierra. We will keep going like this, I hope. Oh, it's all you've been waiting for. Admit it. The sublime and ridiculous are all in the top five plays of the Doha Masters. We start with who else but my man Carlos Las Manas taking off with the two-handed powerful flush. At number four, what's better? It's a Joshua Moon zones, not a no flex zone. It's like ducking on his little brother. That ain't right. Third on the list, Alvin Pasao calling game and instantly becoming a hero in the Philippines. What a win. 
You talk about some Puso. Philippines, stand up one time. In at number two, it's that man again. Carlos Las Manas gets a clear runway, and he rocks the baby to sleep. Good night. Taking out the top spot, though. Expect anybody else? Dushan Bullet with a nasty no-look behind-the-shoulder pass that melted social media down once again. This man is crazy. Put him in a straight jacket. The second Masters will be back June 1st and 2nd from Chengdu, the panda capital of the world. After the winning streak ended, Novi Sad will be looking to get back to their winning ways in China. Remember, you can follow it live with the hashtag 3x3WT on FIBA 3x3 social media channels on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. See y'all in China.